Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of An Atheist Gets Mad. I'm your host, Aaron Sharp, and today we're going to be continuing our examination of Islam with another, some would say, controversial guest. If you remember last time, we had a friend of mine named No More Dogma, who would be considered, I suppose, an anti-SJW, and today we have Christy Winters, who many would call you an SJW. Would you say that that's correct, Christy? I have been called an SJW, yes. Yeah, but you don't prefer that term. I uh, am to understand that you actually pres- uh, prefer the term progressive activist. Yeah, I definitely would say that, yeah. And uh, today we're going to be uh, watching a few videos again from the Love Alla 328 channel. Um, today we're going to be starting off with relationship advice for women, which is going to be, a, I think, very interesting topic to talk about. And uh, so with that being said, let's get right into this. So loving advice to those who, who want to look sexy, but still want to wear hijab. Can we pause it there? Because <laughs> that seems weird to me. I love how we're not even seven seconds in and we already have problems with this. <laughs> like, and so you, you, isn't that a contradiction, though? I mean, the whole point of being covered is that so you don't appear sexy. Yeah, exactly. No, no shit. <laughs> and the other thing too is it's like, remember, this is loving advice. We're, we're, we're telling you this lovingly. Don't show yourself. Just, do, just don't, don't show your hair. Don't show your face. Just don't show any of that stuff. And, 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 but, but we, we love you. We love you. We think you're beautiful. Don't show us love. Yeah, don't show us anything, but just think you're sexy and feel sexy inside, but don't do anything about it and don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that's forced down your throat from Glee to Gilmore Girls. You have to look hot, but you still have to draw your veil. Do, do they have a lot of veiled people on Glee and the Gilmore Girls? <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that episode. I, you know what? I don't watch a whole lot of Glee. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume no. I'm, I, I think I'm going to say no. <laughs> I mean, there might be characters, but, you know, this whole like, oh, it's the Muslim girl. And, oh, she could, I want to make her look so hot, but she also has to draw her veil. So, ooh, yeah. no, I don't remember that being a lot of the plot points or the song inspirations yeah and the other thing too is that the the, the thing about uh gilmore girls or glee or any of these other shows is they're western shows they're not middle eastern shows they're nothing like that so the idea of having all of the girls wearing hijabs or wearing uh uh, non-revealing clothing and stuff like that kind of ridiculous because they're under a completely different cultural uh they're under completely different cultural standards than they would be in the middle east or any other place like that so the idea of showing skin or showing your hair and stuff like that that's not a problem here that's a problem there yeah right so first to the girls who or to the people who don't dress modestly this could be guys or girls who make excuses and say i have a clean heart for them it's my suggestion. It's my thought and a caring word. Don't make excuses for what someone else is doing incorrectly. What I say is try it. It just seems like sentence fragments. I, I think in his head they make sense together. <laughs> but I don't understand how you get from, I don't have to cover myself because I have a clean heart. Like, what? how do those two things go together? I guess, you know, if you're pure inside, you don't have to be pure outside. But I don't know. It just doesn't, yeah, like that's disconnected. And then this whole thing about, you know, don't make excuses for what someone else is doing incorrectly. What I say, just try it. Is he the one doing the thing incorrect? I don't know. It just mm. seems like there's a lot of sentence fragments going on that's hard to follow his thinking here. I gave an example and it shattered a lot of people's comfort levels. But you know the whole Trayvon Hood thing? People are wearing hoods. A congressman wore a hood in, in the assembly and was asked to, be, uh, to leave. I encourage young people who need uh, the push. Okay. Um... The Trayvon Hood thing isn't exactly a a religious based no. uh, ideology that forces you to wear a hood. That was in solidarity because a child got shot. That was in, it, it was in solidarity. It had nothing to do with a religious belief. Nothing at all. And I'm apples and oranges are coming to mind. Mm. Like hoodies and hijabs, they're not the same. 
there's no parallels to be made here. I mean, like, hey, check it out. Like, if you want to wear a hijab and it has no religious uh, cultural connotation, anything like that, and you just want to wear it because it's cool, fine. Then it's basically the same as a hoodie. But the fact that people are being forced to wear these things, that's the difference. The difference is somebody wanted to wear that hoodie in the uh, wherever it was in con Congress or whatever. Um, but then people in the Middle East and some people here are forced by the laws, forced by the culture or forced by their parents to wear these kinds of clothing uh, to appease some kind of mythical sky daddy that you apparently think exists. So, yeah, it's not the same thing. Don't do it for Trayvon, but... Put a hijab or dress modestly, stop wearing such tight clothing. And when someone says, hey, you look different, it's like, hey, I'm trying to represent. What? You can make up a... <laughs> what? <laughs> I almost spit on my coffee. Some... Don't wear your hijab for Trayvon. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I see a bunch of, you know, women in hijabs, like, you know, just like tapping their hearts and going, Trayvon, man. Like, I don't, I don't see it, like pouring out their coffee the for their hood. Yeah, yes. <laughs> no, these, again, apples and oranges. Just because his head was covered doesn't mean it's the same thing as... Wearing a hijab. Oh, this is very, very interesting. <laughs> and when someone says, hey, you look different, it's like, hey, I'm trying to represent. You could make up a funny excuse. <laughs> as it is. It's, it's like an analogy. <laughs> what are you trying to represent in that case? Oh, <laughs> Just... I don't know. He's going he's gonna to crack open a bottle of like vintage Marlowe and pour a little bit on the ground for his homies. I know. I feel like he's just done a marathon of like bad boys and a whole bunch, like you know, and he's gotten all the lingo, but doesn't really get the concepts. It doesn't uh, understand why it doesn't really work when he uses the the terms in the way he's using them. This is for my boy Muhammad. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Be like, oh, it's like the Trayvon thing. I'm just trying to dress confidently. This gives us an excuse to get around. Because Sorry. You had nothing to do with dressing confidently. No. No. Oh my god, he was going out to buy fucking snacks. He went yep. to buy snacks, he was wearing a hoodie. You know, okay, imagine this. You want to go outside to the store, so then you put a fucking jacket on that has a hood. And then you go and you buy the fucking snacks. It wasn't anything to do with goddamn fucking... Ah. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, I have the same sentiment. Even the... Ah. <laughs> yes, that part especially. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. We worry about what people say. The last uh, and most important thing is, I mean this with all due respect to my to my sisters, I don't grow up uh, knowing that it, it's, I'm not growing up saying that it's easy to wear hijab in America, but I am saying this much. If you're going to put the cloak on your head, then match the part. Yes, like, but the, the thing is, though, is that um, Muslims aren't necessarily the only people that wear head coverings, right? Jewish people do this, like uh, some very fundamentalist cre uh, Christian uh, women do this, uh, stuff like that. So it, it's not necessarily like Muslims are the only ones that do it. And America has, I don't know if you realize this, a lot of uh, people there that tend to cover their heads for religious reasons. It, it has nothing to do with, it's not a hard thing to do. All you're doing is wearing a, a headscarf, right? Yeah. But, but I, I would assume that he would mostly be talking about the negative stereotypes that come about from people wearing these kinds of headdresses. And in particular, what he seems to be saying is that, look, women, you have an extra duty. And not only do you have to dress modestly, but you have to act modestly. So you have to be perfect. Men, we can get away with stuff. We can walk around with our hair uncovered. And that's fine. But, you know, it really sucks. But for you, it's just harder. And you're going to, you know, and so represent <laughs> I guess is the message without even questioning why would you tolerate that level of unfairness when you can change it by changing your attitude and I, I have to say I don't know what he says about matching the part I guess he's going to set it up now but it is a sort of the yeah, inside outside um, that you have to uh, have an extra level of purity and demands on you to, to if you're a woman because people can see immediately because you have the hijab on or however you're covering they're going to associate those articles with your faith so yeah i mean they do have they're more of an ambassador than men are who can blend who can kind of get away with being seen as secular because you can't see your faith unless you wear it on your head or on your body and so that's what women are doing and again yeah that's just a, it's really super uh, unequal it's not no i don't i don't think it's fair either but my question is like um 
what about the moderates, right? What about moderate Muslims who uh, don't believe that you shouldn't have to wear skin or sorry, that you shouldn't have to wear completely loose clothing? Maybe some of them believe that you should be able to wear slightly tighter clothing. Like the, the thing is, is that there are moderates that exist in every religion. And to sit there and say that they're not any more uh, involved in that religion than the other people is just a no true Scotsman fallacy. That's all that it is. You're, you're setting up a standard for these people to uh, have their faith based on when really people are going to interpret those passages, interpret those books in a very, very different way. Every single person that interprets that book is going to interpret it differently than another person. That's just the way that human nature works. And I, I think I said this in, in uh, the last video is that if you want to know what's uh, wrong with the first um, uh, uh, with the with the first church of Christ, you need no go no further than the second church of Christ. Everybody has a different interpretation of their religion. So to sit there and say that, oh, these people are not Muslims or these people are, are uh, not Christians or not Jewish because they do this particular thing or they don't do this particular thing. No. That's bullshit. They're just as much Muslim or Christian or Jewish or whatever as the other person is. You're just creating this fallacy where somebody has to uh, uh, go by your standards. Well, you know what? Maybe they don't give a fuck about your standards. Maybe they have completely different standards. There was a campaign in Iran a few months ago where men were putting head coverings on their heads because the law had been changed or the government was enforcing head coverings for women and their husbands were like wanted to do something to say this is wrong. I think it's unfair on her. So to show solidarity, they would put the head covering on themselves and take a selfie with themselves and their wives. Oh, really? To show so yeah. And so there are. You know, we tend to think of the Muslim world as a big lumpy, you know, thing of of homogeneity, when really there's quite a lot of variation. So you know, women in Iran have very different experiences from women in Saudi Arabia who have different experiences from women in Kuwait or um, Iraq. So yeah, we're, there's a lot of opportunity to see moderates and to make connections with people who want to reform the more radical aspects of or the more medieval aspects of their faith. Oh my god, yes, absolutely. And oh, that that's and it's the most obvious fucking thing in the world, clearly. People are different. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm going to wear a baseball cap sideways covering one eyebrow and I have a chain, I ain't going to walk around in a, in a suit with a handkerchief, right? <laughs> I'm going to play the part. Um no, because I'm pretty sure that I would be fine wearing a sideways hat, a chain, and a fucking suit. You know what? Dress how you want. I don't fucking care. Who cares if you're wearing a suit or not? You wear, wear a fucking tie with fucking no shirt on and a pair of border shorts. I don't care what you're wearing. It doesn't matter. We don't have fashion police. Yeah. It's, oh my God. No shit. And the idea that you have fashion police in your culture is really fucking weird and foreign and you wonder why a lot of people and you're saying before oh well it's hard to wear a hijab in america and stuff like that yeah i can understand why a lot of people would be confused about that kind of thing because we're not imposing those kinds of laws on people we're not imposing those kinds of belief structures so if you're choosing to make this affectionate connection with your creator that this is yours you look to your creator and say, this is yours i'm gonna cover it and when what, 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 what affectionate connection are we having with our creator because we get dressed? <laughs> Surely he can see us naked if he exists. So what does it matter what clothes we put on? He could always see our bits. That's true. Oh, man, that's really true. You got to think about it. Like uh, uh, Allah, he's got like x-ray specs. He can see everything that's going on down there. <laughs> like it's just like yeah, like just Allah sitting on a beach going, I see all naked people. <laughs> Doesn't Allah live on like the moon or something? I have no proof oh, that, that I like I don't know. I don't think that they actually say that. But he lives up in the sky somewhere, so I'm pretty sure he's looking down on everybody and being like, "Yeah, you know what? Hey, those twigging giggleberries that fucking Joe has over there, <laughs> not bad. He's packing. I like it. I uh, some some grade A work. I think I've done there. Grade A. Yes, that's a really good one. That one could use some work. That one, oh, look, that's cute. Um. <laughs> I just made that one as a joke. I don't think anybody's yeah. gonna understand what's going on there. <laughs> that poor guy, he's never going to get laid. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, it doesn't matter to God what kind of clothes you wear, because presumably you're not really wearing clothes for an omniscient, omnipotent being. You're doing it so that you don't get, so that men don't have to have the discomfort of having a sexual thought and then pushing it from their mind. 
Right. That's the real problem that the centers around this is that we don't want to inconvenience people with sexual thoughts and these people are disproportionately, you know, men. So women are the ones who are being covered in this, you know, because of the way that power system works and the way that men hold power uh, historically, you know. But um yeah, this is it's really about baby proofing the world to prevent in particular men from having sexual thoughts. That's why women have to go through all this. Well, and the question is how low Seriously, how low do you actually think of men that they can't look at a girl who's wearing a clothing that shows her fucking wrist or ankle and they can't help themselves but to jump on that? How how low do you actually think of people that way? And also, how low do you fucking think of women that they're going out showing their wrist or ankle and immediately assuming that they want to fuck? That does they are not DTF just because they show a wrist or ankle. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Very and I just have to say, so I'm I'm straight, but there have been women who, when they've walked in, I've been like, wow, that's that's some amazing cleavage. That's that's impressive. I'm distracted. I'm a straight woman, and I'm seriously <laughs> distracted, and I have to practice talking to their eyes. So I know that there's got to be an effort. And and to be honest, like the the first time it really happened to me, where I got really distracted by somebody by a woman's cleavage. I just and it was actually in a classroom setting, and the guy I was watching the eyes of the professor because once I noticed, I'm like, he's gonna look. Never looked, and my, my respect for him went up so much because it was only you know a little bit lower than he had to drop his eyes. Never did. Kept him constant. I'm like, that is honor. That is self control. That is respect. That and is serious self control. Or yeah. his peripheral vision game is just on point. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just stare right into her eyes. No, I'm looking in your eyes, but I'm really looking below your eyes. Um, uh, now look, we... <laughs> look what we've become. Now we're talking about men like they can't help but look at women. <laughs> well, no, I was saying I was relating. I was empathizing here, you know, for a, a moment. But um, yeah. So, but it can be done. You know, it definitely can be done. We shouldn't, yeah, think the worst of men or or treat all men um, or assume that all men would be the worst thing that men can be. And we have some respect, have some ability to see people's potential and honor that potential. And we have, I think, as Western societies especially, have given men an opportunity to, through feminism, um, to have, instead of housewives that they're married to, to have partners who are equal who can help them and understand them in ways that 150 years ago, couples probably couldn't. So um, yes, it, we can think better of men because men can be better. They are better than what religion reduces them to. Sure. Yeah, no, I I, I would agree uh, with most of that. I, I would uh, ask, do you think that it's because um, of feminism or do you think that it's more or less just human nature that people don't want to be total pricks? And if you have a friend that's a girl, you don't really want to be objectifying her in that way because that would be rude. Well, I see that as like an exercise. So men, so let's say men in uh, Saudi Arabia don't have to practice any self-control or learn how to look a woman in the eye and not only focus on her body to set that aside for another time or to have a sly glance when she's not looking so that she doesn't feel uncomfortable, but obviously you look. Because um, everybody looks. You just have to look when they're not looking. You don't want to make someone else feel uncomfortable. That's, That's viral, why God anyway. invented sunglasses. Yes. <laughs> right? um, so you need the opportunity to practice the skills. Sure, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that comes with fem feminism because women would enter a new space and then they would would, there would be boundaries pushed and people had to learn to adapt. It's evolution. Uh, when you're talking about this, are you talking about pop feminism? I mean, the kind of feminism that we see on Tumblr and stuff like that? Um, or what, what do you I'm mean when historical. you say fem feminism? So I'm thinking historical feminism. So the idea that women could ever be in a voting booth was a radical idea a hundred years ago. But women had to agitate and men who supported them agitated with them. And then suddenly there were pink ballots and blue ballots. Well, that became illegal because they were differentiating on sex. And women began to vote and then women began running for offices. And But there were no women's toilets in the House or the Senate. Really? So they were never... Oh, yeah. Women only got their own toilets in the House, I think, in the late 90s. And in the Senate in the, st in the like, last decade. Yeah. You're fucking kidding me in the 90s? That's insane. But you know what that reminds me of? Yeah, well, 
Oh, well, the the, the uh, blue and pink ballots, I've never heard of that before, but it reminds me a lot of the the three-fifths uh, deal. I don't know if women had a lesser vote or anything like that, but it's uh, this uh, stark difference between the uh, regular vote and then whoever we decided to kind of let vote afterwards kind of deal. It's like a stark difference. You can kind of, you can see the line that's being drawn there. These people are regular Americans. They have all the rights and freedoms as everybody uh, should have. And these are the others that we're kind of letting into our group. Hmm. Seems kind of odd to me. So yeah, you're not talking about pop feminism, the kind of thing you'll find on Tumblr. You're talking about historical feminism where the where feminists and uh, women worked towards uh, gaining equal rights and freedoms the same as everybody should have. Yeah, exactly. Coming okay. into whether it's politics or the economic sphere, having their own jobs and not just being the secretary, but, you know, actually coming into spaces like becoming doctors and lawyers, um, all that kind of stuff. Women had to do it before men had to deal with women in those situations. Hmm. So. Yeah. And, and you know what? I agree with that, uh, that idea of feminism. I can't per personally say that I agree with the uh, typical thing, you know, that everybody says the Tumblr feminists who get upset about all kinds of different things and the word triggered and all this kind of stuff. I don't agree with that. I think that that's very, very silly and damaging. But at the same time, there is a different faction as far as I'm concerned, where people are actually talking about cultural significances and they're talking about uh, gender equality and stuff like that. So I, I think that there is a difference there. I think that personally, the word feminist should have never been commandeered and used in the way that the Tumblr feminists are using it. But hey, that's the English language is a living, evolving thing. So we're going to have to you know, deal my with solution to that is I don't go on Tumblr. <laughs> That's it. I, I've never interacted with a Tumblr feminist because I've never gone on Tumblr. Really? I just go to like the National Organization of Women or the Planned Parenthood Action Fund or other groups that advance women's interests or we have a focus on it because it's something I care about. Um, so, yeah, I've never kind of interacted with any of these people. I think mostly because I haven't gone looking for them. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. When you allow me to meet someone that I love, then I will share that with them. So that's my advice to everyone at home having that trouble. Take the leap, try it, and keep your intention for God. And please um, try to make modesty something more than a cloth on your head. And we all know what that means. So make sure that you cover yourself all the time, except for the odd time that you're going to be in the room alone with the person that you're married to. Because that doesn't create sexual repression. That, that, that's, that, I'm sure that's totally normal. I'm sure that anybody who grows up in a society like that doesn't put the pussy on a pedestal and they don't think constantly <laughs> about how they really, really, really want to get laid. I'm sure that that doesn't happen. I'm sure that the, the, the Catholic schoolgirl syndrome that happens in, in uh, 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 Western culture, I'm sure that's nowhere near what happens in Islam, right? I just want to say that this, this idea that women should cover themselves to everyone except the, the husband that they're going to be wedded to, and he and only he is the person for whom they should take that covering off. Because you know what? Nobody owns my body. My body does not belong to anyone. It is not his right to see me in a way that nobody else sees me. That is all bullshit. And that's what it's playing into here. It's this idea that you're special. You're precious, right? And so, like, you're, you're a diamond. And you're if we a prize. Flash, yeah. If we flash you around, people will want to steal you and have you for themselves. So if you cover yourself up, then I don't have to, like, then you do the work of covering up your diamond, and then only I get to see your diamond because it belongs to me. That's seriously messed up. It's not romantic. It's... It's a power relationship that's based on one person's ownership of somebody else. Uh, yeah, I, I was just about to say the exact same thing. It's the uh, it's the idea as people as property, and that is fucking wrong. People yeah, are not I mean, property. And uh, and the other thing too is that if you ever noticed uh, somebody that just gets an engagement ring, everybody wants to see that diamond. So you <laughs> yes. know what? If you got a guy, if you got a beautiful diamond, show it off. That's all I'm saying. If you want to, if you want to, if you don't want to, then don't, right? That That's up to you. But it's not, it should not be left up to somebody else. Who cares if they're your husband or, or your uh, parents or your fucking God? I don't care about any of that kind of stuff. All right? Do you. You do you. And then after that, who gives a fuck what anybody else thinks?
There's also, I think, you know, I, I, I know that I've heard people say that women find the covering liberating because then you have to, they feel like you're, they're treating, they're dealing with you as a person, not you as a woman in a woman's body. But I think part of the problem of that disassociation is that you think that you can't be a woman in a woman's body and still be treated with respect. So it's not the, pro the covering isn't protecting you. It's, it's really not. It's, it's a barrier between you and other people that feeds off of a fear and a distance. And what's really comfortable is when you walk outside with your face the way you want it to look, your hair the way you want it to look, and clothes you either feel good about or you don't give a crap about because it's Saturday, you're just running to the grocery store, and you don't care who you run into, and you just walk outside and you're a person. You're just a person in a woman's body or a man's body or a trans body or whatever else, but you're a person first and you see other people. That's what we should all feel comfortable going out of our house doing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, here's the thing. Like I realize men and women have differences, right? Guys don't typically have boobs. Sometimes they do. And you know what? Sometimes that's great. But typically guys don't have the same body structure as a woman. Does that mean that women should be treated differently than a man? No, of course we should accept our differences. We should understand that we have those differences. We should work with those differences, but to treat somebody as lesser than you are because they happen to be different from you, that's reprehensible shit and it should be stopped. Yeah, I mean, the human body is it's a work of, you know, it's a biological work of art. Mm -hmm. It's efficient. I love to, I really like martial arts movies, you know, because in some ways it's like really violent ballet. And yeah, you know, it is. If, if it wasn't, if I lived in a country where women always had to be covered, I wouldn't know what it's like to be distracted by a nice set of boobs, by like a man, <laughs> right? Um, because I wouldn't see them. And it's like, I wouldn't have had that experience to suddenly see how difficult it could be to, you know, have that challenge of seeing something very attractive, but not right now. You have to focus and stay in the moment and, you know, do that. I yeah. didn't realize that was work until that time. No, so exactly, right? Respect men more. Yeah. But and here's or, the thing too, it's not even just about boobs or butts or 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 arms or anything like that. We're talking about when you're talking about more the more fundamentalist religious people, you're we're talking about even seeing their face, their eyes, their yes. hands. People wear gloves. You're not supposed to know that these people are fucking people. And right. when you do that, you take the humanity out of them entirely and you make them seem like a different fucking organism entirely. That is not a way to get anything done that is a way to marginalize to mischaracterize and to turn people from people into things that are not people and that's not right and please um try to make modesty something more than a cloth on your head and we all know what that means yeah it means in your mind Put the cloth on your brain. It means don't think about freedom. Don't think about yourself as a sexual being. Just put the cloth on your head as well as on your face and your brain as well as on your face. Are, are you insinuating oh. that this uh, uh, ideology promotes thought policing? You wouldn't be you wouldn't be saying that, would you? Um, oh, actually, yeah, I am. Oh, oh OK. <laughs> Dang, that's well, exactly hey. what I'm saying. I, hey, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> the hijab is not the cloth on the head. It's khimar, which is something that comes over your head and covers your neck and your bosoms. And also, it doesn't indicate that you have legs. I, I love how it uh, how it has the difference between like what he's actually saying and then at the bottom, the words, it says, covers your neck and also it doesn't indicate that you have legs. But he said bosoms. I heard him say yeah. bosoms. I heard him bosoms say Bosoms is it. in there. Don't, yeah. try, don't try to make it seem like he didn't say that, because I know he fucking said that. He said that. He said it. We have to. We're we are being real, right? Absolutely. We got to keep it real. Men we're are real. Not, they're not exactly the most beautiful creatures in the world, right? Objection. I'm sorry. Men are beautiful. And they, they can be beautiful in a lot of ways. And I get it. If you're a straight guy, you're going to say women are... I agree, I agree. The female form is aesthetically pleasing. But to say that women, men aren't beautiful is sexist. I'm going to, yeah. And, and are you telling me that these guys aren't, aren't kind of sexy? They're, they're kind of sexy. I mean, I'm straight. I'm straight. Kind of sexy. Yeah, look at the straightness of your face, the straightness of your arms. <laughs> Still a little bit sexy. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But the thing is, is that uh, beauty is like art. It's in the eye of the beholder. I know that sounds very pretentious, but it's true, right? Now, what one person finds to be beautiful, another person might find to be repulsive. It has nothing. That's wh how fucking wet play exists, right? Like, it's all different. People are different. They enjoy different things.
Right. And if men aren't beautiful, then men can't be sexy, so men don't have to cover themselves. But because women are beautiful, and they can be sexy, and that's a problem for the guys, not the women, women should cover themselves. <laughs> My question is, what do they do when there's a trans person? Do they do they tell them that like you 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 gotta wear the hijab, or or do they just, like how do how does that work? How does that work? They, do they only does have not to, compute? Yeah, does not compute. They, they fucking it would blow their goddamn minds. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to do with this. You, you should cover up, but at the same time, you got a dick. You got a dick, so I can't tell you to cover up. Ah, can you even yeah. go out in public? How like, about this? Uh, sorry, you mind you your own business your, when you're alone. Yeah, no, exactly. Mind your own fucking business. <laughs> How about that idea? How about we all just try to, I don't know, not micromanage people's fucking lives and not give yeah. them their shit? I don't know. Yeah. It's, a, it's a crazy thought just off the top of my head. I, just, I, I don't know where it came from. You do you. That should be the motto. You do you, as you said before. But a woman, could, a woman carries that honor. Let's treasure that honor in a box. Did I not call it? Did I not call the diamond covering your diamond? Yeah, no, that's exactly. That's so stupid. That's so fucking stupid. So you got to make sure that you you have something special. You have something special. Better hide that shit. Better hide that shit because somebody's going to fucking take it and rape it. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's it. You know, you have to treat your body like something. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Women have to view themselves as a thing that could be violated. So they have to take extra precautions to not be violated even if that threat in their daily life doesn't exist, they still have to, we still have to act like it is a threat all the time in order to not be a victim. We have to assume that we're going to be a victim in order to stop being a victim. But it's not just like when we, you know, it's, oh, yeah. And the other thing that I wanted to say, sorry, I'm going to pull the social scientist card out. I read an article recently about researchers who are looking into two different kinds of sexism. One is a more overtly hostile sexism about questioning women want special rights and women take offense at things unnecessarily. The other series of questions they asked was about, you know, women are softer or women are more precious or whatever else. So, so the idea is that there's a sort of a hostile sexism and then there's what's called like a benevolent sexism. It's like, oh, let me get that for you, little lady, because you can't. It's not really like you're a person I want to help you because you're in need. It's you're too, it's an infantilization. It's you're too weak, so let me do it for you. That is a perfect word for it. It is. It's infantilization. It fucking is exactly that. And you know what? At the same time, it kind of reminds me like of when people uh, say things like, oh, well, Chinese people are just better at math. They're smarter than other people. I don't think you realize, I don't think you realize this, but that's still kind of fucking racist to say. I mean, yeah, I get it. It's positive, And I wish more people would say that I was good at math or that I had a big dick, but no, <laughs> it, it's still a little bit, it's still a little bit, it might be nice. It might, it might, sorry, not, it might seem nice, right? But it, it's not nice. It's, it's not, it's not a good thing. And it's the same thing about women saying, oh, well, they are more beautiful or they're more precious or they're more, no, dude. That's like fucking your opinion, man, right? Like I know a lot of gay dudes that I'm pretty sure would love nothing more than to have dicks in their mouth and never to look at a titty ever, right? Yep. And they think that's beautiful. And I think that's fine. Put as many dicks in, in your mouth as you want. I don't care. <laughs> it's it a good fit. Matter. It's a good fit. It's a, th it's a th Human beings, turns out, we're sexually active. And guess what? That's nature. That's how we evolved. If we didn't have those things, then we wouldn't have progressed to the point that we're at today. Oh. And as you say, you know, it is a it's a personal thing what's beautiful. It's a personal thing what's attractive. And the idea that these heteronormative uh, ideas that the straight white not sorry the white but the the straight male. Right. What his what that not his, but the notion of what a, a straight man should find attractive is the norm for everybody, regardless of their sexual orientation or whether they're a man or woman. That whole norm is placed on the whole society and everyone is invested in perpetuating that norm for that one group. God damn it. And you want to talk about entitlement culture and this kind of thing. You're literally just talking about how you are entitled, how everybody, you're entitled to have this be the standard at which everybody is judged. You know what? Fuck you. I don't give a fuck what you say. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Honestly, I don't care. Uh, question though. What do you mean exactly by heteronormative? Yeah. Heteronormative is the word that describes a concept of a set of values that that are basically heterosexual values and not that they're just values but they are the standard they are the norms by which everyone should be judged 
So a heteronormative situation, it's, it's like the Viagra commercials that only ever show straight couples and they never show two gay men. <laughs> right? Have you ever seen a Viagra commercial for two gay men? No, I wouldn't. I'd love to see a Viagra lemon party. Now that would just be some. <laughs> yeah. So that is an example of a heteronormative theme advertising a product that is actually meant for more than just straight guys. And so the concept is, is really, I know that for some people might think, oh, you're using a lot of jargon, but it's really just a really quick way to encapsulate a whole series of norms so you can contrast it against an, an, like an opposite. What would a more inclusive normative view of Viagra look like? And that's just an, one example of how you can apply the concept of heteronormativity. Hmm, interesting. Okay. All right. Let's see. Because you, you, you know what? I noticed that like a lot of different words that are not necessarily that word specifically, but I noticed that a lot of different types of words. And I've had this conversation with many of my friends on both sides, really. And uh, where it's basically like uh, there are these words that certain people who would classify others as SJWs use where it's like heteronormative or rape culture or this uh, or uh, um uh, patriarchy and stuff like that. And I noticed that a lot of people have a lot of problems with those specific words. Personally, I don't know if they necessarily have a problem with what the word means. I think that they more or less have a problem with the word itself. For example, rape culture. When you think of the word rape culture, now I know you might not because you uh, are from a different uh, 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 social um, structure than I am, right? But uh, when uh, when a lot of people that I know hear the word rape culture, they immediately think, what the fuck are you talking about? We're not letting people go around raping people. Raping people is the worst possible thing that you could possibly do. So why? how could you sit there and say that we have a rape culture when really rape culture might mean something different to them than it does to the person that's talking about it? So It might mean um, a series of cases where men are found guilty of rape and then do very little prison time because the judges say that it's more important that they don't have, you know, these strikes on them and that they're reintegrated in, into society, although they've been convicted of rape. And yet we don't see that for burglary. We don't see that for car theft. We don't see that for other crimes. There seems to be the special carve out where uh, judges who are predominantly men, I don't want to say exclusively because I don't know all the law cases, but that normativity of, well, you know, we don't want to ruin the swimmer's life because of one mistake right. he committed a crime why don't you treat him like every other criminal well you're talking about that, so, that swimmer the 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 obvious brock rapist brock turner yeah okay. but there was also a man who raped a child who got basically a slap on the wrist in terms of a prison mm -hmm. sentence and when you see these cases again and again one isolated incident you go you know that's not a culture but you see it happening, it comes up in the news every four to six months that there's a case where somebody, a judge, for instance, says that um, a teenage girl who was under, age of, under the age of consent was leading, was participating in the teacher's like um, sexual pursuit of her and their sexual relationship. So he shouldn't really be considered a rapist because she invited this. She was a child who couldn't consent. Yeah, no, that whole consent thing, pretty important, pretty, yeah. pre pretty damn important. Yeah. Um, but rape culture is, um, it's a more subtle thing. Yeah. So it isn't just uh, people are encouraging other people to rape, but if you start, if you have someone who can explain it more broadly and then you can witness it happening yourself, then you become more sensitized to it. The, the thing is that you, people use the term and other people interpret it. And then they are really talking past each other. Yeah. And you know what? And I totally agree with that. That's kind of the, the thing that I've found the most is that whenever somebody ends up using one of these words and you know what? Uh, I, and I have this conversation with my wife all the time. She thinks that rape culture is a perfectly descriptive term of what's going on. I personally, not, not so much because when you say the words rape culture, and I'm not saying that it's not what, like the way that you explained it, I'm not saying that that's not what's happening, but the, when you were, when when you use those words, I almost feel like it becomes kind of buzzwordy where it's kind of like, oh, cultural Marxism or cuck or SJW or rape culture or this. Like we use these words and then we end up taking meaning from them that maybe somebody that was saying that word didn't necessarily mean by it, right? I think there are kind of two conversations, you know, there are the conversations that I have where I provide definitions and examples. And then there are times that I'm just talking to people who know what I mean. Sure. And yeah. so we can just use a shorthand and you can communicate a lot faster than saying a tendency in the judicial system and in, in the justice system and in the military for there to not be the pursuit of rape complaints that there's a very low 
proce- um, the processing of DNA kits uh, deliberately by people in some cases. You know, you, you, you can have a 40 word sentence that describes rape culture. Or you can just say rape culture, which is what you say. You know, it's a shorthand for it. <laughs> I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, what, what do you say to people that uh, say that, well, I, like we get it, rape uh, happens, but it's also extremely hard for people to find out if somebody was actually rape or, raped or if it was just consensual and that person decided to change their mind afterwards and say that it was rape when actually it was consensual sex. Like, what do you say to people that say those kinds of things? What I would say is I wish there was a video game that you could play that would show you basically like have a dark street and it would have you do if you you had to do all the tips that women and girls are taught to do walking down an isolated street and if you don't do it you get you know you fail or you get jumped or something happens so that you just wait steam greenlight is going to have this it's going to be rape simulator they're going to have it And, you know, so if you don't take your, you can take your keys out of your pockets, but if you don't put your keys between your fingers, then that's not a weapon. So you fail. If you don't walk in the middle of the road because there are dodgy areas, you get grabbed. You know, if you don't, um, you know, cross the street when there's a man coming on the other side, not saying he's a rapist, but you don't know. So, you know, um, you fail because when I walk down the street home alone, every time I have to do that. And I'd love to be in a country where I only worried about getting mugged. And not have to also worry about the sexual yeah, predatory. Yeah, that would be people. progress mm-hmm. for me to just worry about having my wallet and my phone stolen. Um, now, is there some kind of way that you've thought of or anything like that, that we can determine if that was an actual rape or if that person was lying about said rape. Because personally, I think that it's fucking terrible when people lie and say that they were raped when it wasn't actually true. And we have many documented cases of that. But I also think it's fucking incredibly reprehensible when somebody actually rapes someone and then they get off any legal charges from it. So what would you uh, like? Is there do you have a way that you would be able to possibly determine? in that or any kind of thoughts on that there are people who have been prosecuted for filing false charges Mm -hmm. um there are also people who withdraw their charges but you don't know why they withdraw their charges so not every withdrawn charge is because the allegation was false the person might decide they don't want to go through the court system it's too embarrassing or whatever else so you know other than the court system i don't know of a way but what i would say in the on the issue of consent is if we had a scenario where let's say a guy wasn't really interested in a girl and, but she was really interested in him. And they were out at a party. He was a little bit drunk. Um, she was at the party. Uh, they, he started doing shots and got quite drunk. And she came over and started encouraging him to drink. He was well too, too drunk to drive, too drunk to walk. But they go back to her room and they have sex. And the next day, he's thinking... I made a terrible, that was, that was not what I wanted. I was not in my right mind. I was not able to actually think of what I wanted because I was too drunk. I wasn't able to consent. I was raped. And I think that when people talk about drunk sex, the concern that I have, if you have people who know each other and they've had a sexual relationship and they're both into it, that's fine. But if you have a, a, a stranger situation or beginning of a relationship situation and someone uses alcohol to get someone so drunk that they're not able to give consent in order to have sex with them, that person to me is a sexual predator. And it doesn't really matter if it's a man or a woman, um, whoever was made to penetrate or was penetrated Um, in that situation, really too drunk to consent. Those are the situations that I think people would say he woke up the next day and realized he made a mistake and regretted it and then said he was raped. Well, no, he was well beyond the ability to give consent, like when she came over and then she perpetuated that state in my scenario in order to get him in bed. So she was taking advantage of that situation because he was in an in incapacitated state. Sure. Well, what, I, what, what would you say to somebody that because uh, as far as what you've explained uh, and I, I agree with you that if somebody is so drunk that they are unable to consent, then that is rape, regardless of sex, regardless of anything else. The consent is the deal. Right. But what about the, my, my question really is that 
so if where where do you draw that line right like how drunk does a person have to be and like uh, of course you have to remember it depends on body size it depends on the amount of liquor that they've had it depends on the type of liquor that they've had stuff like that so it whenever and that and this is where it gets fuzzy for me is that when somebody is drunk and they say hey i want to have sex and then the next day well, then they say, oh, well, I actually didn't want to have sex. And now that was rape. Like I, I see that as a, a, a problem, right? Because you could you kind of can use that almost as an out. You know what I mean? Like, and I know that a lot of people have that problem. And the scenario that you set up, 100% accurate, right? Like if somebody is too drunk to consent, that's wrong. But if they're just drunk enough that they lowered their inhibitions a little bit and they decided to consent, or maybe they're a little bit past that. Like, where do you draw that line is my question. I don't know that there's a line, but I would say that the guideline is if you have any doubt about the person's ability to consent, just wait till they sober up a little bit because if they wanted to do you drunk, they'll want to do you sober. <laughs> and that way you're both, you both know what you're doing. That depends. No I, I mean, area. I've had some beer you goggles know? once in a while where I really want it. And then the next day I'm like, Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. It turns out that that was a ficus tree. <laughs> yeah. I, there, there are gray areas, but I think, you know, just as women are asked all the time to protect themselves by changing their behavior, that in these cases, uh, men aren't often asked to say, wait till she sobers up, protect yourself. And I think that that would be a good message of protection that we could put out there that would probably re reduce the number of rape accusations. Because I know that when I'm too drunk to drive, I can still talk and interact and make jokes and probably do bad karaoke. But it doesn't mean I should sign a contract committing me to do something for the next three years in that state. So if someone really wanted me to sign that contract, they wouldn't do it at the end of the night. You know, they do it the next day. And I think that that's just a, a good rule um, to, if you, if you have any doubt, protect yourself and just don't. So, so I, I would say personally that a good barometer to go off of would be if you can't, if you're too drunk to operate heavy machinery, you're too drunk to operate this heavy machinery. If you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Okay, that was and can I say, no, I don't think a woman or a man would ever be offended by someone who said, look, I am really into you and I'm very attracted to you, but I want to make sure that we're both sober when this happens because I want to, I want to be aware. And so um, I'm going to go home. Um, I'm going to call you and I hope we can have dinner and maybe one or two glasses of wine and that's it and then see what happens. I honestly think that that would be, for me at least, a huge turn on because it says something about that person and what he thinks of me and himself and what he wants us to experience. That would be a total turn on. So, <laughs> waiting, you know, I just think it would be a really good, not like strategy, but you're protecting yourself. You're able to be gracious and it makes, I think, a good impression. Yeah. Okay. In a behind a veil or within the confines of modesty. Women are treasure. Treasure. They are treasure. beyond. They are the princesses of the home. Women, don't don't forget, women are treasure. They're, they're prizes to be won. You, you remember you remember Aladdin, that whole thing? I'm not a prize to be won. Yeah, turns out they are. <laughs> Princess and Mario. Got to rescue her. Well, oh. Then you get her. If you rescue her, you get her. And at the end, you get cake. But I'm pretty, <laughs> sure, I'm pretty sure she means pie. <laughs> She's my cherry pie. <laughs> For those of you. And he treated an empress and ha you never see the queen or the empress trotting around in whatever she wants. She's always dignified. And that's what Islam wants to do. Not is true. Not true. Actually, um, culturally, uh, in I, I don't I don't remember the exact date, but I'll put it up on the screen if I can find it. Uh, is uh, back in olden times, uh, the royalty or the uh, more regal women uh, actually wore sheer uh, clothing, so you could glimpse at their breasts because a, a, a royal woman in the West was considered like her breasts were considered like fucking amazing. Like oh my god, you you, you can only glimpse at those things. But then the peasant women, it didn't really matter if they had had their titties hanging out all day long because it they, they just weren't 
it, it wasn't a thing back then. It was like, oh, well, hey, look, that peasant woman woman's got her top off. Who really gives a shit about that? Oh, She's my God. She's probably her kids. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And then they'd say, oh, my God, look at this royal woman. She you can just glimpse her nipple. Oh, my God. So, yeah. No, um, that's it's not true. It's just fa- you're factually inaccurate. Maybe. Uh, in your uh, culture, in your uh, in the Middle East, stuff like that, maybe that is true, but that's not true everywhere. And to make those broad generalizations about the past um, is just about as uh, egregious as when you're making broad generalizations and flat out just false assumptions about fucking evolution and science. So uh, fuck you, maybe. Yeah, the psychology of this is you're so beautiful and special that we um, need to put a barrier up around you. And we need to keep you controlled and, and, and keep you away, you know, so that there's mystery and distance and dignity. And we need to regulate your human interactions because you're so special. And so the, the whole psychology of it is, is very much a, like the ownership, again, a perspective of owning somebody or basically as property to be owned by somebody else rather than seeing them as people. Well, and that's, and they're literally saying that you're not a person, you're a prize, you're a diamond, you're a fucking this thing, that thing. You're a princess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Who wants to live as a Saudi princess? (laughs) Talk about the most regulated life in the world. Oh my God. But you know what? I might, that's a lot of money. I might be able to buy a fast car. No, because you can't drive it. Oh my God. You're right. Oh, Jesus. Oh, maybe I'll be a trans woman (laughs) and then, and then I'll get myself a Saudi prince. You can't tell me to go. You can't tell me I can't go out alone. Look, I got a dick. Okay, sorry. Give honor not just to men and not just to women, but to our society. Yes. And it might not make sense in the beginning because Vogue, because Lady Gaga wore meat. She made a meat dress. And she said, I don't want to be looked at as a piece of meat. <laughs> of course you, 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 you... What the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about? This has nothing to do with... The, what? 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 How about, hey, how about this? Can we, can I make a steak hijab? I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. Maybe, maybe like, <laughs> oh, maybe, God. maybe like a, the brisk, flies. a pair the of brisket flies. pants. Sorry. The flies. The fly. Oh, the fly. So many flies. My goodness. It would be like, it wouldn't be like a full burqa, you know, by the time you, because you got all of this, it'd be like pig pen swarm of you know, gray around you that would eventually just cover you up. Well, and if anybody's ever seen like a marketplace in like uh, Pakistan or India or something like that. Ah, it's a fucking lot of flies, man. God damn it. You're going to stick out. So why not cover? Why not, instead of making these huge statements and wearing meat, why don't we just cover ourselves? <laughs> why express our individuality? Why not all look the same? <laughs> why don't they, you know what? Let's just, no, no, come on, guys. Seriously, cut it out with the meat dresses, all right? I've had, an, I've had <laughs> it up to here with people wearing meat. God damn it. And how do we even know that, that, that it's halal meat? We don't. It might not be halal meat. And what are the vegetarians and vegans supposed to do? So unfair to them. Oh, I know, right? Like, you can't wear a salad dress. You, you, no. you it's not fashionable. That's so 2010. And treat ourselves like human beings and have interactions up here, not down here. But make sure that you have all of your interactions up here and not down there. Because any interactions down there, you must only have with your husband. And uh, yeah, and, and, and if you don't, you're going to be, I, I don't know, uh, uh, disowned. Uh, some cultures stoned to death. Like what? Like Honor killings. Sorry, honor killings. Seriously? Seriously, that's where we're at here? Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone. That's it for this half of the show. If you want to check out the full thing uncut, you can go to my Patreon page and uh, check us out there. And uh, and I guess next time we're going to be continuing our talk with Christy Winters about Islam. Uh, and uh, yeah, is there anything you want to say, Christy, before we get going? Would you like to plug something? Oh, well, yes, I've got new content coming out all the time on my channel. I do a wide range of issues, politics, social issues. I talk about feminism. I've started a new series called Feminist Talk Back, where I get different feminists from the YouTube community to come on and answer questions from that people have left in the comments. So please check any of that or all of that out at my channel. Yeah, and it's all really good. Uh, you might not agree with it, and you might, and hey, who knows, you might agree with every single bit of it. And that's kind of the point, is that no matter if you agree, agree or you disagree the idea is to keep an open mind listen to other people's perspectives and actually try to have a conversation and not a fucking yelling match anyway thank you very much this has been aaron sharp and uh keep evolving you've got to get mad